Hey there once again YouTube, how you guys doing? Sorry I haven't been around much lately, it's been pretty crazy lately. Been very very busy, getting ready for the third child that I have on its way right now. So, I am still around though, I mean, I'm still going to be making videos here and there, and even check on the multiple blogs on my website under Seismic Blogs to see if I've updated anything, or even under Seismic Events. Um, so I still am around guys, and I did put out a post on my Seismo blog the other day about the magnitude 5.4 that struck Northern Australia, and it was very, very peculiar. The waveforms of the event were very, very odd. And scrolling down, let's see, you can see the event right here on the web recorder from the closest seismic station, right there. And here are some of the waveforms from the closest seismic station, unfiltered, with a 1 hertz high pass filter, and with a band pass filter of 0 0.8 to 6 hertz. Very strange looking, almost looked like an underground collapse, and the moment tensor provided by USGS may support that, possibly. I talked about these fried egg looking moment tensors not too long ago, probably like 10 videos ago or so. Um, they usually occur when collapses occur, at least from what I have seen. And here we see opposite of that. We see here's a moment tensor, right? These are basic moment tensors. Obviously, they can vary a little bit, but still be the same type of event. Uh, but here's the moment tensor. And look at this. It says ring fault. So I suggest this could be a failure of a ring fault, possibly, which occurs along ancient volcanic calderas and also impact sites. Now, I did have someone uh, post a comment on here, Darren Forbes, thank you for this comment, and he said that there is an impact crater out there. So, I went to check it out. Let's go to Google Earth. So, I have set both, both parameters right here. Uh, we have Kelly West Crater, which is the one that he was talking about, all the way down here, which is an ancient impact site of an asteroid. There's that right there. Let's zoom all the way out. But the epicenter of the magnitude 5.4 was all the way to the north. Geologically speaking, it is very, very, very close. But I would expect a rainfall failure at an impact site to be actually right in the immediate vicinity of the impact site. So, don't know what was going on there. I don't see any ancient volcanic calderas in this area either. So, could this just be a random, strange underground collapse? Maybe. I don't know. Very, very strange. It does look a little rounded right here, possibly. See that right here? I don't know if you guys can see that line or not. It's kind of curved. So it looks like there could be a little curvature from an ancient caldera, but I doubt it, though. I doubt there really shouldn't be any volcanic calderas out here at all. So don't know what that was about. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below if you guys want to check it out. Let's move on. Just an update for some recent volcanic activity. Umumun, which is, uh, where is that? Is that Papua New Guinea? I think it's Papua New Guinea, right? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Papua New Guinea, I believe. Well, I'm going to say Papua New Guinea. I believe that is where it is located. Yes, New Britain, Papua New Guinea. Had some big eruptions lately. Remember about a year or so ago, it had a eruption, a VEI-4, which is a pretty large eruption. Headed up to about 63,000 feet. I believe that was about a week or two ago. And then just earlier today, we had a 45,000 foot eruption from Ulumun. 17,000 feet from Kermiski. And then yesterday, let's see if I can find it. Uh, I'll get to it. So we have been seeing some more volcanic eruptions. Stromboli in Italy is seeing a good amount of eruptions as well. And let's press more. The level of activity at the Stromboli Volcano in Italy. Strong and frequent Strombolian type eruptions are occurring from several vents, most notably from the northeastern and south central vents. Strong thermal signals from the vent areas indicate that magma column remains standing very high. Also, small lava overflows continue to occur, mostly from the collapsed area at the southwestern rims of the caldera, or excuse me, the crater terraces. And you can see on the volcanic activity index for Stromboli, it seems to be rising. So, another big eruption could occur, like it happened in early July. Just keep an eye out for that. Going down, I'm trying to find... Okay, and then earlier, at another one to 45,000 feet at Ulumun. But I'm looking for a different one. Come on, buddy. Where is it? 45,000 feet. Popo Catapetal is still erupting like crazy. Still right. Aha, here it is. Ulumun Volcano, New Britain, Papua New Guinea. Another large eruption to 19 kilometers into the atmosphere. 63,000 feet. Wow. 
Unrest has once again escalated and a phase of major eruptive activity occurred between around 10 and 11 UTC today, sending a mushroom cloud to 19 kilometers as in the VEI-4 eruption in June. Oh, it was in June. This event appears to have been smaller and has now ended. Satellite imagery shows the ash cloud drifting away from the volcano. Wow, guys. So, Oumuamun really has been seeing some big eruptions lately, guys. Big eruptions. Going to the United States, just, I'm going to say, maybe 10, 20 miles east of Bellevue or so. And Washington State, we did 2.7 to 15.2 kilometers in depth, which was felt by multiple people in the area. Even up near where I live, someone reported feeling it, but... I did not feel it. I was at Seafair at the time. Yep, we went to Seafair, saw the Blue Angels. It was really, really fun. Traffic was very stressful, but it was very fun. Down here near Ridgecrest, swarming and aftershocks continue, though, in a diminished form. However, you need to notice something real quick, which potentially, potentially, excuse me, could be pretty major. Let's go to U.S. Faults. All right, the aftershocks from the magnitude 7.1 and 6.4, I think it's 6.4, right? Yeah, 6.4 and 7.1 earlier in July. The aftershocks and swarming from this event is heading towards the Garlock Fault, right down here, which the Garlock Fault is potential magnitude 8, guys. It's very, 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 very large fault that is potentially connected to the San Andreas Fault Zone. So it's not good that we're seeing aftershocks creeping towards the Garlock Fault, guys. It's going to start adding some pressure in this area, so... Keep an eye out for increased seismicity along the Garlock Fall. I believe four shocks will occur prior to the magnitude 8, kind of like how we saw in Ridgecrest and Coastal Volcanic Field when the 7.1 and 6.4 occurred. Very intriguing, guys. Very, very intriguing. Going up. Zooming all the way out if it'll let me. Computer's a little slow today. Let's go to Montana, shall we? Let's go to the past seven days. All magnitudes. Come on, buddy. Very slow. Very, very, very slow. Okay, terrain. All right, so just northwest of Bozeman, Montana, right near Manhattan, Montana, between Three Forks and Belgrade, we saw an earthquake swarm breakout, guys. The fourth, the third... There were a few in late July, but the main swarming occurred on August 2nd and continued to pretty much right now. It's still kind of continuing a little bit. Multiple quakes, 2.3, 2.2, 3.5 at 12.8 kilometers in depth. And then later on, we had a 2.5 and a 2.8. And then just a little bit later on, we had another 3.5. That's very intriguing, guys. That's a good amount of swarming for the Manhattan, Montana area. Let's take a look at it from the closest seismic station just real quick. So we're going to take a look at the main burst of seismicity from the closest seismic station um, on August 3rd, 2019. Here we have one right here. I believe this was at 12.8 kilometers in depth. I think that's the 3.5, I believe. So it's a pretty strong swarming going on near Manhattan, Montana. A lot of other quakes that were not reported, probably because they're a little bit too small, but we do see very teeny tiny aftershocks. Then there's another quake there, another quake right here. Normal high range frequencies, as we can tell, clear P and S wave arrivals. Multiple events, guys, multiple, multiple events. Here, let me turn on a one hertz high pass filter to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. There we go. Straightens it out a little bit. Very intriguing, guys. So why is there a good amount of swarming occurring up in Manhattan, Montana? Very, very weird. Yep, so that's it for right there. Now, there's something really interesting that I would like to bring up to you guys. So, on July 27, 2019, I put out a blog post on my website about recent increase in magnitude of earthquakes at Kilauea and Mauna Loa and recent spasmodic tremor events. Now, there's something I really want you guys to take note. Let's go all the way down to the earthquake at Kilauea. Where is it? Okay, this event right here. Notice these three pots right here. Let's take a closer look. This 3.0, originally 3.6, at 0.0, .0 kilometers in depth occurred at the Kilauea Summit on July 26, 2019 at about 6.43 UTC. This signature is vastly different from many of the other earthquakes in this area. It is very similar to the eruption signatures from 2018. 
Although an explosive eruption did not occur on July 26, 2019, it is possible this was due to magma encountering groundwater, the reason Kilauea saw explosive eruptions in 2018. Now you may remember in my, I believe it was my most previous video or the video before that, I did mention that this earthquake did look like po a possible eruption. Eruption didn't occur, but I said that since the eruptions of Kilauea in 2018, the explosive ash eruptions were from magma encountering groundwater, I suggested that this could have been caused by that same process, but it just didn't kickstart an eruption. Now, come to find out, just a few days after I put out that post, they said kill wave volcanoes not erupting. Monitoring data continued to show steady rates of seismicity and ground deformation. Blah, 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 blah. Geological LIDAR surveys of Kilauea observed a small green patch within the deepest visible area of the new summit caldera. HBO scientists are working to confirm if this may be water, and if so, its origin and significance. Also, come to find out... They put out a blog post on their Volcano Watch blog, which you can find basically on volcanoes.usgs.gov. Scroll all the way down and it'll say Volcano Watch in one of the uh, paragraphs. Just click on that. So, now scientists usually base their research on observations, either visual or instrumental. Interpretations come from these observations, so they must be as good as possible. Incorrect observations can and have led to erroneous interpretations. Now, I'm going to leave a link to this in the description box below. Go read this. It is very intriguing. And here we have a picture of that green patch right here. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Here's that green patch. Notice it's at the bottom of Kilauea Caldera inside Haile Mau Mau Crater. There it is right there. You can see that, right? Now this is after that magnitude 3.0, which looked like an eruption signature, occurred. And I said it could be from magma encountering groundwater. Well... Telephoto views of water in the bottom of Haole Mau Mau taken during a helicopter and LIDAR survey on July 25th, 2019, when the pond was first observed. So this is about two days before that 3.0 occurred. So the pond pretty much started just a few days before that earthquake occurred that looked like an eruption. So there might be more groundwater seeping into the caldera and underneath the caldera, which would be a bad sign because magma does not mix with water, guys. It becomes very explosive. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on this. Again, come read this if you want. It's very, very intriguing article. I really like how they put it out there. So, there is water. There's a little lake forming at the bottom of Haile Mau Mau. Don't know how long that will last, but I don't know, guys. Pretty crazy. So next, we're going to talk about the Axial Seamount. And zooming all the way out on Google Earth, you can pretty much see where it is located. Sorry if my audio is cutting in and out. Uh, Google Earth does that. It makes it glitch out a little bit. Axial Seamount is a volcano far to the west of Oregon and Washington State on the Juan de Fuca Ridge. Going all the way down. You see many volcanoes in this area, guys. Lots of volcanic activity in this area. Going all the way down. We see the area right here. Now, we're going to talk about this because one of my viewers sent me in some information. They wanted to understand what the rhythmic events were that were occurring on the spectrogram. And yes, there are seismic stations underneath the ocean. Now, Axial Seamount, also called Coaxial Seamount or Axial Volcano, is a seamount and submarine volcano located on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, approximately 480 kilometers west of Cannon Beach, Oregon. Standing about 3609 feet high, Axial Seamount is the youngest volcano and current eruptive center of the cobb eichelberg Seamount chain. Located at the center of both a geological hotspot from the mantle and a mid-ocean ridge, the Seamount is geologically complex and its origins are still poorly understood. And to the northeast, southwest of the center, the volcano features an unusual rectangular caldera. As you can see right here, notice how it looks like basically a rectangle, a little rounded on the sides, but it is a rectangle in nature. Very intriguing. It has an unusual rectangle called Dara, and its flanks are pockmarked by fissures, vents, sheet flows, and pit craters up to 328 feet deep. Its geology is further complicated by its intersection with several smaller seamounts surrounding it. Wow. Going all the way down. There was an eruption in 1998, a pretty big eruption. And then in 2011, there was another volcanic eruption at the Axial Seamount. So, 
Could another one be occurring? I wouldn't be surprised if it's constantly occurring there. It's a very, very, very active volcano underneath the sea. Who knew that there was a caldera right on the Juan de Fuca Ridge just west of Oregon? I did not know that, so I thought that was very interesting. Thought I'd let you guys know. Now, let's look at some of the seismic data that someone sent me to take a look at. I thought it was very intriguing. I thought it was a malfunction at first. However, I found out they were very real rhythmic seismic events. We're going to take a look at that now. Let's take a look at the stations first. Here we have Network OO. Notice off the coast of Portland. Far off the coast of Portland. So this should be the actual seamount right here. But just to prove it to you guys, I'm going to take the station in the center. I'm going to copy the geographical coordinates. Press copy. Then I'm going to go to Google Earth right here. I'm going to type it in. Press search. Notice how that station is right at the axial seamount. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. Let's try to gather some data from three stations in this area. I don't know exactly which stations I'm going to use, but I'm going to use them. So I'm going to gather data from for sure from this one right here because this is miles away. So anything that is not seismic in nature would not show up on this station, guys. So let's check it out in Swarm. Now here we have AXEC1 in the OO network, which is right up here at the axial seamount. The second station we have, as you can see, is AXBA1 to serve as a reference point, sort of, which is all the way down here. So let's say something's a malfunction or it is activity on the surface of the ocean, not on the surface of the ocean. I mean, on the surface of the ocean floor, like animals or whatever. Um, it wouldn't show all the way down here. So if it shows on both these stations, it's definitely seismic and has to do likely with the volcano in question. Okay. Notice all of these rhythmic beats. I'm going to go to the spectrogram just for a second. Notice how they barely have any lower frequencies at all. I'm going to do one hertz high pass filter to the eighth power. There we go. Look how rhythmic they are. Now, just to the naked eye, barely any lower frequencies at all. But they almost appear to be electronic malfunctions right right because there really are no clear p and s wave arrivals likely because it's occurring right at the surface right where the station is located look at that perfectly rhythmic perfectly rhythmic perfectly rhythmic now i wanted to use in that other station that was miles away as a reference point because if these truly are earthquakes if these truly are drum beat earthquakes then it would show on a very distant station in the area Thank God they have a distance station ready. Now, we're going to use this as the reference point. Notice these rhythmic drum beat earthquakes stopped right here, and then a few of them started again, but at a different pace. Notice how the rhythm stopped at about 252 UTC right here. Now let's go over here. AXBA1, which is much farther away. Let's go to the spectrogram. So at 252 UTC... Notice at 252 UTC, it stops. That rhythm, that constant, constant rhythm of earthquakes. Notice that? Constant, constant, perfect rhythm. Almost 100% perfect and uniform in nature. Look at that. Look at that. What is going on? What? Is, look at all those. I thought these were electronic malfunctions, but they show miles and miles away. I was very shocked as to what I found. Very interesting. At 252, it stops, and then we see a different rhythm of drumbeat quakes. Boom, 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 boom. Notice that? And it does look like... Now, this is a broadband station, so I'm going to add a 1 hertz high pass filter. But that tremor is still there. I was thinking those are oceanic microseisms, but to me, that looks a little bit more along the lines of tremor, volcanic tremor. Very interesting. So, again, at 252 ETC, the rhythm stops and changes. 252 ETC, the rhythm stops and changes. Look at that, guys. Look at all these. These are real drumbeat earthquakes. Look at that. Look at the perfect rhythm. Look at this. I was so shocked. And the PNS wave arrivals are very confusing on this. I can't even find them. Very, very weird. But this is just insane. I've never seen anything like this. Look at the rhythm. Look at that. Look at that. That's why I thought they were malfunctions, because they were almost perfectly spaced. But Mount St. Helens in 2004-2008 saw drumbeat earthquakes that were almost 
100% perfectly spaced. So, it's not impossible, guys. So, all of these are drumbeat earthquakes at the Axial Seamount off the coast of Oregon. Wow. So, is an eruption taking place there right now? I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised at all. It's a very active submarine volcano. Let's go down here. Notice we still see the drumbeat pattern. It starts to break up a little bit and then starts back up again. And notice how it starts and stops basically at the same time as the other station, too. Look at that. Now, if I saw that at Yellowstone or Mount Rainier or something, then I'd be freaking out. But this is the Axial Seamount Volcano. It is a seamount and caldera far off the coast of Oregon along the Juan de Fuca Ridge. Currently seeing some type of volcanic activity causing dr perfectly rhythmic drumbeat earthquakes. You can tell they are slightly different each time it occurs, but they are very identical and occurring in a very perfect rhythm. So, do you think an eruption is occurring at the Axial Seamount Volcano? I think so. I definitely think so. Very, very strange, guys. Very strange. Well, that's it for right now. I'm going to see if anything else occurred while I was recording, because sometimes it does. One day all magnitudes. Go to world. And my computer froze again. No, I, there we go. Thank you. One day all magnitudes, not much happened. That's it for right now. God bless, guys. Hope you have a great day. See you later.